All right. So basically, ever since the COVID-19, uh, firstly, I'm sorry, just let me welcome you to this session. Thank you for sparing some time in your evening to attend this particular session. Now, the COVID-19 vaccination in India, the vaccination drive in India began on the 16th of Jan 2021. And it's, I guess, a boon for this particular pandemic so that we can curb the pandemic faster. Uh, ever since the vaccination has begun, uh, we have been getting a lot of questions about whether we should take the vaccine. That's question number one. Second question is, is this vaccine really effective? Does it really work? Should I really take this vaccine? Should I not take this vaccine? What are the indications? Which, what is the ineligibility? Quite a bit, you know. So just to answer all those questions, uh, this particular webinar was arranged so that it becomes easier for you to understand what this vaccine is all about. And uh, I will try to answer the most common queries that are put forward to us. So uh, that is so that's how we'll start. Yeah, so this will be the outline of my talk. Uh, I'll be starting with a brief introduction of the COVID-19 situation in India. I'll be speaking about the importance of vaccination followed by a brief information about the currently available COVID vaccines in India. Thereafter, I'll be responding to a few queries uh, which are very commonly asked to us. Uh, I'll try to provide some evidence-based uh, responses to that. Uh, I'll be quoting a few references from which I've gathered this entire material from the, uh, this thing. And uh, I, thereafter, I'll be answering, I'll be uh, opening the floor to the audience to ask me any questions if any. All right. So let's start uh, the present COVID situation in India. As of as recently as 29th of March 2021, we have had over 12 million cases in mm -hmm. India. Uh, if I'm not sure if you can uh, see this particular pencil mark, but uh, if you look at the manner in which the slope of the curve is this time, it's quite steep compared to how it was sometime in July and August, you know. So the number of cases are rising rapidly in this particular in this particular session. Compare that to hold on, please. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, there are some technical difficulties in this presentation. Apologies for that. Yeah. Uh, apart from that, uh, in spite of so many cases coming over, uh, fortunately, we have had we have not had more than 1.6 lakhs. Like that itself is a huge number. However, if you look at the manner in which the number of deaths is increasing, it's not as rapid as it was before. So that's a bit reassuring. Now, what is the importance of vaccination? So before you understand the importance of vaccination, let me try to make it. Let me try to make you understand as to what really happens when a person gets infected. Let's start with that first. So what happens is once the person gets infected, uh, the body generates an immune response against that infection. It creates antibodies. It's an army to fight that infection. Once the army is created, it will fight the infection and it will get rid of it. All right. So that's how the normally how the system works. Now, what happens in vaccination? In vaccination, we are trying to introduce specific components of that particular infection, which do not really harm you. All right. But the components that we have introduced you to, the body will generate an immune response against those particular components, and it will generate antibodies. It will create an army within your body. In case you do get infected thereafter, this, this, we already have an army ready to kill the particular infection. So that is the basic principle of vaccination that you need to understand. All right. So moving forward from this, the next obvious question is, why should we vaccinate ourselves? Hmm? The of most obvious answer to that is so that we reduce the chance of getting the infection. That is extremely true. But that is not the only thing that we need to do. It reduces the severity of disease. That is extremely important. It reduces hospitalizations due to the infection. It reduces deaths due to the infection. So even if you're vaccinated and in case, unfortunately, you do get the disease, in that particular case, your disease will be milder. You will be much better coped to uh, tackle it. All right. So that is the entire importance of vaccination. 
Now, the COVID vaccination drive in India, as said earlier, started on the 16th of Jan 2021. Ever since then, over 52 million doses of the COVID vaccine have been administered across the country. Now, 52 million sounds like a big number, but if you actually look at the percentage, it's just under 4%. So over the past two months, we have just been able to vaccinate 4% of your population and that too with a single dose, which is a very small number right now. Uh, to understand why this is a small number is you need to understand that there's a concept called herd immunity, wherein we expect that if enough people are vaccinated around us, we automatically become immune to the particular virus or the particular infection, all right? So for most of the infections, that particular number ranges in between 85 to 95 percent. We are still at 4 percent. So we really need to pick up. We really need to go forward with the vaccination to develop that herd immunity. OK, moving forward. Before I talk about the vaccines itself, let me try to speak to you about the virus first. Now, this is your COVID virus. All right. Coronavirus. Do you see these red projections all across it? This is known as the spike, the spike antigen or the spike protein. This is the protein which is responsible for attaching the virus to the various organs in your body and eventually uh, produce uh, ill effects. You understand? Now, these particular spikes were look a bit like crowns. As a result of which, the name of this virus is coronavirus. Okay, now why am I going into the details of this particular virus this way? I need you to understand. Uh, if you understand this particular concept, you will be able to understand the vaccines which you guys are taking right now and the ones which are available right now. All right. So moving forward, uh, which are the COVID vaccines available in India? Now, before I talk about that, I have always been asked that what does efficacy really mean? Now, to understand this particular concept, please understand that there are large scale clinical trials held to understand if a vaccine really works or not. So for and this particular trial involves thousands of patients. These patients are divided into two groups. One of them will receive the vaccine. One of them will not receive the vaccine. So, for example, in these two groups, there are a hundred if 100 cases occur in patients in the group which received the vaccine and 100 cases occur in the group which did not receive the vaccine. So the efficacy of the vaccine would be zero, basically because it was not able to reduce the number of cases in the patient. It was not able to reduce the number of cases at all. However, you have another scenario wherein the group who receives the vaccine, only 50 cases occurred in that group, while in the group that did not receive the vaccine, 100 cases occurred in that group. So the vaccine was able to reduce 50% of cases in those who took it, all right? So the efficacy of the vaccine would be 50%. This is a very important concept to understand whenever you're reading the newspapers and whenever you're reading about the efficacy, all right? So that is one important aspect. So once you have this concept clear, let me move on to the, to move on to the vaccines which are available in India right now. The first one is Covishield which is being produced by the Serum Institute of India. It is also being produced by the AstraZeneca and it's known as the Oxford vaccine. Now, what does this vaccine do? It actually provides you only with the spike protein, all right? It is providing you just the spike protein, not the entire virus. Now, with regards to this particular vaccine, two large-scale clinical trials have been done till date. One of them involved 17,000 individuals, which was conducted in UK, Brazil, and South Africa. The second trial uh, occurred in the United States, Chile, and Peru, which involved 32,000 individuals. The overall efficacy was 63 to 79%. So if we take 63% as a benchmark, what does that 63% mean? That if you actually took the vaccine, you are 63% less likely to get the infection compared to the person who did not receive the vaccine. I hope this is clear, all right? So the overall efficacy in these two trials was to the extent of 63 to 79%. What is the most important aspect of these trials? There was 100% efficacy against severe and critical disease along with hospitalization. So all patients who received the vaccine never required hospitalization. They never developed a severe disease. They never developed a critical disease compared to the ones who did not receive the vaccine. 
that is an excellent outcome. Please understand that is the power of vaccination. It was able to save so many lives. Hmm? Second, apart from that, they also found that this particular vaccine was more efficacious if the interval between the two doses was longer. So this particular study was, uh, uh, this particular study came into play sometime in early March. And thereafter, after reviewing all the data that is there, uh, the Indian government guidelines were amended. So initially, they were recommending that the two doses of Covishield should be taken four weeks apart. Now, they say that the second dose of Covishield should be administered between six to eight weeks to have maximum efficacy, to have the best outcomes. All right. So that was the entire point of this particular trial. Moving on to the second vaccine, that is the Covaxin vaccine, which is produced by Bharat Biotech. This particular vaccine provides you with the entire virus, which is inactivated or which is killed rather. All right. So they inject a killed virus into your body. Now, the smaller scale studies uh, which were done and which have been published have shown good antibody titers after two doses. So four weeks after taking the second dose, excellent antibody titers were found. All right. However, phase three clinical trials, which actually evaluates the efficacy of these vaccines, the results of them are not completely out. However, on 3rd of March, Bharat Biotech issued a statement saying that the efficacy, these are the interim results, please mind that, that the efficacy of this vaccine is 81%. It was conducted in 25,800 Indian participants and the final analysis is still awaited. Now, as a physician, as a scientist, as a doctor, uh, we like to wait for the entire data to be supplied to us before we can make any judgments. The, the results of this particular vaccine are undoubtedly encouraging. However, it has still not been peer reviewed. We are really, uh, we are really waiting for this particular paper to come out so that we can analyze it further. But the results have been really excellent up till now, whatever has been published so far. All right, so that's as far as Covaxin is concerned. So moving forward. So these were the two basic vaccines that are available right now. And after giving a brief about these two vaccines, uh, I'm just going to talk about a few common queries that are generally asked to us. Uh, I would like to just put in a disclaimer at present saying that whatever recommendations follow after this are based on the Indian government guidelines the ministry, by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare Wherever, wherever required, wherever needed, I have used the World Health Organization guidelines as well as the British vaccination guidelines where inadequate uh, responses were not available. All right. So the first question is, should I take the COVID vaccine? Well, I'll take a mic and I'll actually say it on the mic. Yes, please do take the vaccine. It's extremely important. It will provide protection against the severe disease. It will prevent hospitalization, it will prevent death, and it will probably even help curb the spread of the disease. Extremely important. Please, please do take the vaccine. Second question is, all right, so if you decide to take the vaccine, which vaccine should you take? Yeah. So India has presently approved two vaccines, Covishield and Covaxin, which we spoke about initially. No head-to-head -head comparisons have been made between the two vaccines. At present, we would recommend that Whatever vaccine is being offered to you at the site where you go for the vaccine, please go ahead with that. Hmm? Second, first, uh, next question is, are there any contraindications to take the vaccine? Which basically means that, is there any condition wherein I should not take the vaccine? That is basically what it means. So the government of India suggests that if pe in people who have had an allergic reaction to a previous dose of a COVID-19 vaccine or those who have allergies to injectable therapies, pharmaceutical products, or food items, they should not really take the vaccine. All right. So these are as recommended by the government of India. Next question that we are commonly asked is, I'm pregnant. May I really take the vaccine? So the guidance is quite clear on this. No, you really cannot take the vaccines simply because the trials that have been done up till now, they did not really involve pregnant women as one of the participants receiving the vaccine. So we don't really have any safety data. We don't have any efficacy data. So at present, it's just safer not to take the vaccine. We don't know what's going to happen in case they do. Next question is, I'm lactating, may I take the vaccine? The answer is the same. 
none of the clinical trials that were done actually involved lactating women. So presently, the recommendation is not to use this vaccine in lactating women either. The next common question that we generally asked is, I'm a cancer patient or an HIV patient. I'm taking immunity reducing drugs. May I please take the vaccine? So the government says that, yes, you can take the vaccine. Please understand that the vaccine that are currently available in India, they're considered safe in patients who have a low immunity. Now you also understand that the immunity is low. Uh, even if you do give the vaccine, you might not be able to generate an adequate response. You understand the antibodies might not really produce that much. So the vaccine efficacy may not be adequate. There are trials underway who are trying to look into this question as to which vaccine would be good for patients who are on immunosuppressants or those who have cancer or those who are HIV. We are eagerly waiting for that data to come in. All right, moving forward. Uh, next question is after I take the vaccine, can I still get COVID? Yes, please understand that you may still get COVID However, the severity of the disease might is expected to be low. You might still get it. So even if you take the vaccine, social distancing measures, hand hygiene, and masks are strongly encouraged, as recommended by our honorable health minister as well. He clearly stated that even if you have taken the vaccine, it does not give you the certificate to abandon social distancing measures. Please pay heed to that. I would strongly encourage social distancing measures even if you have taken the vaccine. Next question is, I'm on blood thinners. I have a bleeding tendency. May I still take the vaccine? So the government advises caution in these particular individuals. Uh, the government says that patients who are on drugs like aspirin or clopidogrel may still take the vaccine. And it needs to be taken under close supervision of the physician. The next question that generally comes in is that I'm not on this particular uh, anti I'm not on this particular blood thinner. I'm on that particular blood thinner. So what are the recommendations for that? So this was a press release uh, given by Dr. Balram Bhargava, who is the chief scientist of ICMR on 28th of Jan. It was clearly stated that Covishield and Covaxin are both safe for patients on blood thinners. So why has this question really come up? What happens is if a patient is on blood thinners, there's always a small chance that you might develop a blood clot at the site where the vaccine is administered. So that is why uh, this particular question comes up. So what did Dr. Bhargava say? That the anticoagulant, for example, you know, if you're on drugs like Apixaban or any other anticoagulant, it needs to be stopped for a day or two prior to giving those who are on anticoagulants, but not on things like aspirin and clopidogrel. You understand? So what I would suggest is that if you are really on a blood thinner, you should consult the physician who started you on a blood thinner, speak to him, and ask him that whether we can stop the blood thinners a couple of days prior to taking the vaccine. All right. This uh, just being on blood thinners is not a contraindication, does not make you eligible to take the vaccine. Uh, next question is, so this was a question which was actually raised by one of my friends a couple of days ago. And after, so this was what I could find. He basically asked me that there were certain concerns about clotting issues with Covishield. Should I still take this vaccine? Now, this particular thing had happened in Europe, where in many countries have actually banned Covishield for the time being till we had any data available. So the World Health Organization actually set up a global advisory committee on vaccine safety. And on 19th of March 2021, they came up with the following recommendation. By 19th of March, approximately 20 million doses of AstraZeneca and 27 million doses of Covishield vaccine had been administered all across the world. What they said, that the available data would not suggest any overall increase in clotting conditions like deep venous thrombosis following the administration of COVID-19 vaccines. They went on to say that a causal relationship between these rare events has not been established. They still say that the, with this particular vaccine continues to have a positive benefit risk profile. So at present, from however it looks, it does seem as if the vaccine can still be taken. Now, following the recommendation of World Health Organization, the European Medicine Agency Safety Committee also issued a statement on 25th of March saying that the vaccine is not associated with an increase in overall risk of blood clots and the benefits of the vaccine outweigh the risk. So there were two separate committees from two largest bodies governing these vaccines 
which said that this particular problem is not really a problem associated with COVID shield. So at present, I would say that yes, uh, you can still go ahead with the vaccine. So these are the few questions which I have tried to answer. And uh, in conclusion, I would just like to say the following statements. Time to take COVID-19 vaccine is now. The next vaccine is the one which is offered to you at hand. With each dose taken, we come one step closer to ending this pandemic. Please take your shot now, right now. These are the resources from where I had taken the entire material. And I'm open to any questions if there are any. Thank you. Thank you so much for attending this talk. Oh, hi, Doctor. There are a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. So the first question is asked by Aman. Mm -hmm. Which medicines are not allowed before or post vaccination? Okay. So majority of the medicines can continue can be taken while you are taking the uh, while you have been prescribed a particular vaccine. However, as I said, that if you are on a specific type of a blood thinner like a pixaban or warfarin or something like that you need to consult your physician who has actually given you this particular anticoagulant and ask him that how many days can we stop it before taking the vaccine. Apart from that, there is no other medicine that really requires any other alteration when taking the treatment per se. Uh, the next question is by Likita. Mm -hmm. is okay to, it is okay to get vaccinated if I have a scheduled surgery in mm. between the two doses, mm. it is still safe to get vaccinated. Please throw some light on this. Yeah, that should not really be a problem. It also depends upon what kind of surgery you are undergoing. So if there is something called a splenectomy, if you are undergoing something like a splenectomy, uh, so there are no specific guidelines for COVID vaccination in patients who are undergoing this particular procedure. But the other regular vaccines are generally expected to be given two weeks prior to the surgery, at least two weeks prior to the surgery. So depending on the surgery which you're undergoing, the recommendation would change. By and large, for majority of the surgeries, it's fine. You can go ahead with the surgery uh, in between the two doses of the vaccine. It should not be a problem. Okay, the next question is, if a person is fully vaccinated or once recovered from COVID-19, can transmit to other people if get infected afterwards? Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. So you're saying that the patient has recovered. Yeah, so basically the patient has recovered for COVID-19 or if he is fully vaccinated, can he or she be a carrier? Okay. So what the guidelines say is that if you have already suffered from COVID-19, the body mounts an enough antibody response and generally the infections are not that common, but they have been documented. As I have said also in the talk that even if you are fully vaccinated, you might still get the infection. So now if you do get the infection, yes, you can transmit it to others. So if you have developed a mild disease or a moderate disease, the Indian guidelines recommend that you might continue transmitting this infection for a period of until 17 days after the symptoms start. So I hope that answers your query well. Okay. If it's infected with, if someone is infected with COVID-19, by how long should the second dose be delayed? starting from day one of quarantine or from the 14th day. Okay. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, what you're asking me is that if you have active COVID right now, when should you take the vaccine? Is that what the question is? Yes, yes. So okay. basically after taking the first dose, if the person is effect again affected with the, uh, you know, COVID. Mm -hmm. And so when should he or she should okay. take the second dose? All right. So what the guidelines recommend is that if you have actually, if you're actually suffering from COVID, then in that particular case, they say that four to six weeks after you have recovered from COVID is when you should take this vaccine. Now, your question is specifically that you have become infected after the first dose, then when should you take the second dose? I guess the same rules apply. You have taken the first dose, you get infected. I would say wait for four to six weeks after you recover to take the second dose. Okay, one more question. If someone has been gone through chemotherapy or chemo radiotherapy, is it safe to take the vaccination? Yeah. So as I had said that any patient who's on anti-cancer drugs, uh, so the two vaccines that are currently available, they are not really live vaccines per se. So they are generally considered safe. 
in patients who are undergoing chemotherapy. But this does come with a caveat because the chemotherapy agents that you are taking will reduce your immunity. And even if you do take the vaccine, how efficacious is it going to be or how much antibodies you'll be able to generate that is still questionable. So this, you need to understand that this is one of the caveats associated with this advice. Okay. Uh, if I have taken the vaccine and if I have some body, can I take painkillers? Of course, please do go ahead with that. We generally recommend paracetamol that you take the repetitive. Okay. Next question is by uh, Tanmaya. There is a recent spike in kids turning positive. What about vaccination for kids? That's an excellent question, Tanya. Thank you for that. Now, I would like to say that whatever trials have been done for Covaxin as well as for Covishield, they are generally for patients who are above 18 years of age. There are no trials that have really been done for patients who are less than that. So currently, the recommendations are that there are the, the children who are less than 18 years of age should not be vaccinated till we have more data available. Okay, I guess someone has asked again the same questions. If a person gets infected after first dose, can the person take second dose and when? So I've already replied to that. Yeah, right, right. So we can move to the next question. We have asked by Savita. Cancer patient can take the vaccine? I've replied to that as well. Yes, the mm -hmm. cancer patients can take the vaccine. should not be a problem. Okay. But the... Uh, can response mm -hmm. would be relatively, it might not be that good. Right. So can the vaccinated people allowed to donate blood, even whether one dose or two doses are being taken? Okay, so that's a very tricky question and a good question at that. Uh, to be very frank, I don't know the answer to that, whether you can donate blood or not. So I do know that patients who have recovered from severe COVID-19, they do donate their plasma for the plasma therapy for patients. Whether they can donate blood to others for any other reason, I do not really know the answer to that. We don't have enough data for that particular, to answer that particular question. But that's an excellent question. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is COVID vaccine safe for thyroid patients? Uh, for thyroid patients? Yes. Yes. It's safe. Okay. Okay, Pankaj is asking, okay, can you please repeat the gap between first and second dose? In both the vaccines, is it? Yeah. Okay, so presently uh, for Covishield, they say that the first and the second dose should be interrupted by a period of six to eight weeks. For Covaxin, they have still suggested four weeks as yet. Till we have no data available. Okay, now Seema is asking a second shot, little more painful. <laughs> Well, I found both the shots painful, so probably <laughs> some people find it painful, some people don't. So, <laughs> right. Yeah, take paracetamol, it really helps. Okay, Sai is asking, could you please show the slide related to COVID shield again? Okay, that's not a problem at all. Okay, uh, yes. I'm just stopping my share screen for one minute. I think there's some problem here. Just give me one second. I'll just. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, we can see your screen. Uh, they wanted the COVID shield thing, is it? COVID shield side, yeah. This particular thing is anyways being recorded, so you can definitely find this data elsewhere uh, once you go onto the Hinduja website or something. But just for your reference, I'll make it available. Is that okay? So we can move to the next question. Sure. Uh, if someone is breastfeeding, can she take the vaccine? Uh, yeah, I did try to answer that in our right. talk. And... Uh, yeah, so unfortunately, the Indian government guidelines at present do not really recommend it. So uh, as an Indian, I would say no. And yeah, that's how it is. Because basically, no important, the trials have not really included any lactating women as yet. In okay. that particular case. Yeah. If someone has one kidney, is it safe to use? Yeah, having one. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. Even if you have a kidney, you can go ahead with the vaccination. It should not be a problem. Okay. Uh, Raghav is asking, can you please repeat the fact that chances of COVID post-intake of vaccine? Okay. 
So you need to understand that vaccine, efficacy of the vaccine is, as I said, 63 to 79% as is being shown in this slide. So if you take the vaccine, you, are, you will be protected from getting the disease in 79% of the time, 63 to 79% of the times, compared to a person who does not take the vaccine. However, there is still a chance that you might get the disease. If you do get the disease, then the severity of the disease will be expected to be low, as was documented by these trials. Okay. So the next question is, uh, why are people getting COVID in spite of taking two shots of vaccine? So I think uh, the previous uh, question was similar. And uh, it's more because even if you do take the vaccine, there is always a chance that you might still get infected. But the severity of the disease is expected to be low. Okay, uh, this is a question by Savita. Is it okay to take army decks during vaccination? Uh, I'm sorry, but I'm not really sure what army decks is. Could you just tell me what the name of the drug? Yeah, is? Savita, can you please be specific about the medicine? So we'll take the next question till the time. Mm -hmm. uh, does one have to go for repeat shot after taking two shots? If yes, okay. then what should be the time gap? Correct. So you're basically talking about a booster dose. So presently, none of the trials have really evaluated a booster dose for this particular disease, basically because whatever trials have been done have basically seen the patient for up to three to four months after the first shot has been taken. All right. So there are no recommendations for a booster dose at present. So I would not really recommend one at present. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next question is by Celine. Can an 82-year-old cancer survivor travel to Dubai after 28 days of the first vaccine and before the second dose? Can I repeat? No, I think that's quite a specific. Yeah. That's an 82-year-old cancer survivor who's taken hmm. the first dose of the vaccine and it's been 28 days since then. Hmm. So you need to understand. And he has traveled to Dubai also. And he's traveled to after 28 days of the first vaccine and before the second dose. So basically, after first vaccine, he has been to Dubai hmm. before taking the second dose. No, but the question is that whether he can travel to Dubai or has he already traveled to Dubai? Again, I just agree because even I am confused. Can an 82 year old cancer survivor travel to Dubai after 28 days of the okay? Basically, she, she's asking she whether she can he can uh, travel or not. So you need to understand that with the current spread of the COVID pandemic, any foreign travel at present is not really advisable. Now, even if you do take the vaccine, yes, it will help you. It will protect you to some extent. You have taken the first dose. It's been four weeks after that. Yes, you have developed, you might have developed some antibodies. But given that your age is around 82 and you are a cancer survivor, the chances of you getting COVID still going to be there if you travel i would really recommend that if it is not urgent and if this particular travel can be avoided i would strongly advise against it for your own safety the next question is by divya if a person is allergic to pain relief ointment can he take vaccine <laughs> so that's a very good question so the indian guidelines currently recommend that uh, patients with any kind of allergy should not receive the vaccine now, what has happened is that WHO had a similar recommendation a few months ago. However, in February, it revised its uh, recommendation to say that only patients who have an allergy to the components of the vaccine being delivered should avoid the vaccine. Patients who do not have allergy to those particular components can still take the vaccine. Now, I also know of people who have been allergic to some drug or some dust or some pollen, etc., who have managed to take the vaccine and they are doing really well. I think that should answer your question. The next question is by Dinesh. I have been on steroids since last 12 years and I'm allergic to sulfa. Can I take the vaccine? Okay, so you have two components here. So as far as the sulfa allergic part is concerned, I think I've just answered your question. As far as the steroids thing is concerned, that basically makes you an immunosuppressed individual or a patient with low immunity. So yes, uh, for this, so even if you do take the vaccine, uh, the 
how efficacious it's going to be. It's a bit difficult to really see that. Okay, the next question is by Ishani. If bypass is done four months back, can I take a vaccine? Yes. As blood thinners are on for lifetime. I understand. So I assume that if you have undergone a bypass and you are on drugs like ecosprin or like aspirin or clopidogrel, then yes, you can take the vaccine, should not be a problem. If you are on drugs like warfarin or if you are on drugs like apixaban, uh, for those particular things, I would suggest that you consult your cardiologist uh, about the bleeding risk and take an advice whether we can stop these drugs a couple of days prior to the vaccine being given. So I would suggest that you speak to your cardiologist once about that. You'll have to look at your INR in case you're on warfarin. So all those things come into play to really answer that question. All right, next question is by Sai. Did you encounter any severe side effects of COVID shield so far in India? Uh, not really that I know. Uh, I do know that the two large trials that have been conducted in UK as well as in USA, so they did have side effects. Some of them did have a rash, but nothing life-threatening to my knowledge as yet. So if you have around 49,000 individuals, including the UK and the US trial, and none of them have really developed a severe threatening disease. So I think that should answer your question quite properly. Okay, I guess that this is a repetitive question uh, asked by Beechal. Hmm. Why are we seeing many people who have taken the vaccine and post that almost immediately have contracted COVID? Correct. So immediately have contracted COVID, right? So what happens is that even when you take the vaccine, it takes some time for the body to develop antibodies. Generally, the duration is around two to four weeks, depending upon the vaccine that you are taking. So suppose you have taken the vaccine today, you develop a disease tomorrow, it won't be surprising. All right. You may still develop the disease after five weeks, uh, basically because it's not a 100% efficacy that you will get. Okay? However, if you do get the disease, the chances of you getting a severe disease are drastically reduced. You'll probably get away with a mild disease, mild or moderate disease. Exactly, because Dr. Even I have encountered so many people who are actually not taking vaccine because they think okay, why we should take vaccine if it is not you know, effective, but they are not understanding that it will reduce the severity, which is more important because it will re reduce the death rates. So guys, we have to take the vaccination then. Undoubtedly. And right. even out here, you have the data wherein it showed a 100% efficacy against severe and critical disease. So right. that is that is excellent. That is really astounding. It might maybe seem down the line we'll get, we can see you know the death rates going very low. Exactly. If everyone is vaccinated. True. True. Right. The next question is by Krishna. Side effects of COVID shield are higher as compared to compared to co vaccine. Will patients be given a choice? Uh, it depends upon the center in which you are going. So if that particular center has two vac both the kinds of vaccines, I guess you should be given a choice. If you're going to a center that has just one type of vaccine, then uh, I don't think that you'll be given any choice in the matter. But doctor, is it true that the side effects of COVID shield are higher as compared to co-vaccine? So as I said that the co-vaccine, the data of co-vaccine has not yet been published. It is not available to the general public. It is not available to the scientists. So I'm not really sure what the what is the uh, percentage of patients who actually got a side effect, you know. So we just uh, the COVID shield data, on the other hand, it is much more robust. We have lots of data about that. There were side effects in that. But I am not really sure whether you can compare the a uh, uh, relative frequency of side effects in Covishield to Covaxin without having the data for Covaxin at present. Okay. Uh, the next question is by Ankush. I have a history of forming blood clots. Presently, I'm not taking any blood thinners since last nine months. Do I need to start blood thinners before taking the first shot? Is that Ankush Poddar? Hi, Ankush. Right. Okay. So, yeah, so that particular question was basically addressed to answer your question. Now, as far as this particular point is concerned, uh, the WHO, as well as the European Medical Agency, have clearly stated that they have not really found any cause of COVID shield being related to the blood clots. So, in my personal opinion, I don't think it's really useful. I would suggest that 
you should take the vaccine, but you should not really take any blood thinning medications. That would be my opinion, depending on how uh, the WHO data, uh, the WHO committee, as well as the EMA committee have advised us. All right. The next question is by Gopal. Can a BP patient take vaccination? Yes, he can. Okay. Uh, okay. People are asking, can, sir, can you repeat guidance about people taking steroids? Okay. So, uh, as far as steroids are concerned, as I said, that uh, steroids have a tendency to reduce to reduce your immunity. All right. So, in that particular case, if you're actually taking the vaccine, you basically respond, require your immune system to generate a response. Okay. So, if your immunity is itself low, the amount of antibodies that it will produce, it's still going to be a bit doubtful. Okay, so as I said that there are no studies which have been done on immunosuppressed individuals till date, but uh, it's like if you're taking the vaccine, at least some immune response will be generated, right? So the recommendation is please go ahead with the vaccine, but it's quite possible that the efficacy would be relative. It might be relatively less. Okay. Uh, someone has asked it seems that some people think that once everyone is or will be vaccinated, then I don't need to as there will be immunity fighting with the virus already. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I'm just reading that question. Just hold on. It seems that some yeah. people think that once everyone is or will be vaccinated, then I don't need to as there will be immunity fighting with the virus already. So few are a bit reluctant in this way to take it. Uh, people think that once everyone is or will be vaccinated, I don't Oh, you're talking about herd immunity, sir. I understand your point. So you are saying that if the others have been vaccinated, then it will create enough immunity around you to protect you. So you don't really need the vaccine. I, I assume that that is what you're asking me. So I understand. So that's called herd immunity. But as, as I showed you in the previous slides, to actually achieve herd immunity, you require at least 85 to 95% of your population to be vaccinated. Now, presently, it's just 4%. So... I would rather advise that you do take the vaccine. Um, it will add on to that 4%. It will keep adding on to that. And eventually, hopefully, we should be able to reach that 85 to 95% mark. The At next present, question is, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so at present, we cannot really expect that if, if the others are vaccinated, then you will be protected because we won't achieve herd immunity at this particular point. All right. The next question is, is the vaccine effective against new double mutation found in India, UK, South Africa, variants, etc.? That's an excellent question. So just to talk about this particular point a bit. So as we are all aware that there are a couple of new strains, that are three new strains that have recently been identified. One of them is the South African strain. One of them is the uh, UK strain. And one of them is the Brazilian strain. So as far as the double mutant strain is concerned, it is known as a variant of concern. What does that basically mean? Is that this particular virus has mutations. However, it is something that you need to be concerned about. However, whether these mutations are really going to give, have an impact on the clinical outcome of the patient or in the infectivity is still uncertain. So it is still not a strain. So whenever this particular variant, uh, variant of concern becomes a clinically, uh, whenever it has a clinical impact, that is when it becomes a strain. So the double mutant variety that you're talking about, it is still a variant of concern. We still don't know whether it is actually going to have any clinical impact on COVID-19. All right. I hope I've made myself a bit clear. The answer to the next question is that are these vaccines going to be effective against this double mutant virus? The answer is we don't know. We don't have enough data as yet. Uh, I know that ICMR is trying to study the effect of the vaccines on this particular thing, but we still don't have enough data to really comment on that. Okay. The next question is by Shelja. Have any trials been done in India for kidney transplant patients? Not that I'm aware of as yet, but I think that would be an excellent thing to do. I have was actually speaking to one of the people in Serum Institute of India who was heading another vaccine trial there for COVID-19. And we had discussed this particular option as well. So he did say that uh, presently once, so presently COVID-19 I think has required emergency use authorization, but it has still not been complete. Uh, emergency use authorization. I think there are some technical formalities that they need to undergo. Once they complete these formalities, they might be starting the trials after that. So 
let's hope for the best let's hope it starts okay the next question is by seema how can a layman understand components of vaccine as to any allergies how can a layman understand components yeah. of the components vaccine? of vaccine as to any allergies okay so when i talk about components of a vaccine uh, there is a list of components that is actually given let me just show you those components hold on please yeah so this is the covid shield covid shield contains the inactivated adenovirus with segment of that spike protein with aluminum hydroxide gel so i'm talking about each and every of these component if you know that for example i hope not but if you are allergic to alcohol for example or ethanol then yes you cannot take covid shield i'm sorry i'm sorry mo because you cannot take alcohol either but yeah so that is one if you are allergic to sucrose you are allergic to salt you are allergic to edta then you cannot take this vaccine so these are the components of the vaccine that you need to be aware about if you are allergic to any of these components then you will be allergic to the vaccine and okay, in case there is any doubt you should consult your doctor before taking any vaccine you should discuss it with your physician okay the next question is post covid recovered person having antibodies that is 170 units detected after 4 months is required to take the vaccine basically yes. for 4 months even if you have developed antibodies after develop i understand that you have had the uh, you have had the virus uh, sorry you have had the disease after that you have developed the virus uh, after that you have developed antibodies and now you are asking me whether you should still take the vaccine is that correct yeah so basically uh, she is asking ke after uh, you know 4 months can she take vaccine still she have developed antibodies yeah, yeah of course please please do if you already have a baseline antibody titer uh, you need to under even if you have a baseline antibody titer you have some protection against the virus if you are taking the covid and a uh, covid uh, covid uh, vaccine on top of that your antibody titers are expected to be boosted up okay. so yes you can still take the vaccine you should take the vaccine rather okay we'll take few more uh, questions uh, the question is if i already okay this is already been answered Uh, is a vaccine necessary? I guess this is very clear. That yes, vaccine is necessary. And uh, okay, the next question is very interesting. Is it okay for people in the same house to get different types of vaccine? Yes, it should be fine uh, as long as the first and second dose are being taken of the same vaccine. For example, if you have taken Covishield and your father has taken Covaxin, for example. then the second dose of covaxin should the your father should receive the second dose of covaxin only he should not receive covishield and you should receive the second dose of covishield only not covaxin so it needs to be the same vaccine needs to be given both the doses but even if different members of the family are taking different vaccines it should be fine okay the next question is how long does protection from a covid vaccine last do That's... we need to take any other shots after after few years correct so that again is an excellent question now whatever trials so as i said that the data for covaxin is still awaited we are still waiting for the results to be published the official results to be published but as far as covid shield is concerned uh, from what i understand i think they have done a 90 month for a 90 day follow up from the first dose or something like that so they did see antibodies up to around 2 to 3 months uh they have not done a longer follow up so we are not sure whether it can last that long but at least up to 2 to 3 months it will definitely last probably most likely longer as well okay the next question is by usha if i'm breastfeeding a baby can i get a vaccination uh so as uh, as i said before usha that's a mm -hmm. good question and a very relevant question but unfortunately whatever trials have been done have not really included breastfeeding women in that the indian guidelines currently recommend that you should not really take the vaccine okay so we'll take the last questions now uh, what is the difference between the first dose and the second dose there is no real difference you are getting the same component the second time that's all it's just that when you take once you take the first dose your body will generate an immune response give some time for the body to generate a decent enough immune response when you put in the second dose suppose that your antibody response is going up like this you give the second shot here and it goes up like that you understand so it's basically trying to boost up your antibody response that is what you are doing there is no difference in the first and the second dose 
all right so i guess we are done actually i am getting one more question uh, she is asking can a person travel after taking both the doses keeping in mind all the necessary precautions so yeah is it safe to travel i understand i think uh, it was similar question was asked before as well as i said that in the current pandemic with the disease spread so wide by uh, uh, with the disease so widespread it is always advisable to avoid travel if it is avoidable please to avoid and uh, if you are maintain and if you do go in case you cannot avoid the travel then as you said with all precautions if you are going please do that make sure that you are following social distancing you are uh, following proper hand hygiene you are wearing your masks properly this will go a long way to avoid disease okay i guess we are getting so many questions if you guys guys have any questions you can send it to us at marketing at hindujahospital dot com we will surely get in touch with you so doctor any last message you want to give it to the audience okay so uh, i can basically want to say that i understand that we are still in the you know in the sense we have still not gathered enough information about the all the kinds of vaccines that are available to us right now we are still in the learning phase every week there is a new development but one thing is certain that if you are taking the vaccine it's going to reduce the severity of the disease there is no second doubt no second thought about it please go and vaccinate yourself please ask others to vaccinate that is the only manner in which we can fight this disease we can try to get this epidemic under control and to get herd immunity i think vaccination is the only answer to that you can come up with all kinds of fancy drugs all kinds of monoclonal antibodies to combat the disease but until and unless you are vaccinating yourself you will never be truly protected please please go and take your shot right away all right doctor thank you so much i guess you have cleared so many doubts around covid vaccination at the end the message should be everyone should get vaccinated if you really want to you know uh, reduce the death rates and you know yeah doctor just a last message from your side undoubtedly as i said that please go and take your shot now it will go a long way in helping us deal with this epidemic okay all right so yeah, yeah to consult with dr umang you can book your appointment by calling 02267668181 or you can book online at www.hindujahospital.com thank you so much doctor thank you thank you so much and thank you everyone for joining in this session i hope this was very useful for you guys thank you take care thank you. all the best have a lovely evening